Hello everybody and welcome to the first lesson of AP US Government and Politics. And for this one is Introducing Government. And let's get started. So, what is government? Government is an institution, whether it be the executive, legislative, judicial, or the bureaucracy, that makes policy. And politics, what is politics? The definition is the process by which we select our government leaders and what policies these leaders produce. So politics produces authoritative decisions about public issues. So the policymaking process involves individuals or groups identifying a problem, then that problem becomes part of the policy agenda, and then Congress passes legislation, and then the bureaucracy implements it, and then the feedback from the new legislation that has been passed then makes the revision, leads to the revisions. And linkage, linkage institutions. These are the political parties, elections, media, interest groups. These can be um, sing also include single issue groups as well. So policy agenda. So the it is the issues that government is addressing at a point in time. So items at the top of the policy agenda are taken care of first, and it may take years to get to an item on the policy agenda, and then several more years to enact to actually enact that policy. So the policy-making institutions are the legislative, or the legislature, which is Congress, the executive, the president, the courts, both federal and state, and then the different bureaucracies, both in federal and state. So implementation. Once a policy is implemented, the feedback that occurs is, is it effective or ineffective? And then are there resources available? and does this policy need to be revised or clarified? So do we need to change this policy? And then democracy, what is democracy? It's a system of, a system with free and fair elections and civil rights and liberties. And also there's equality in voting, effective participation, enlightened understanding, citizen control of the agenda, and inclusion. And then some theories of US democracy is the plural pluralist theory, which is a theory of government and policies emphasizing that politics is mainly a competition among groups, each one pressing for its own preferred politics, which we see today with the different poli different parties, such as the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, are both pushing for their own preferred policies. And these groups sometimes work will work together, and the public interest should ultimately prevail. So another theory is the elite and class theory. So a theory of government and politics contending that societies are divided along class lines and that an upper class elite will rule. And these policies tend to benefit those with money or and or power. And part of this elite and class theory, a super PAC is a political action committee that is allowed to raise and spend unlimited amounts of money from corporations, unions, individuals, and associations. Some nonprofit groups are allowed to contribute to super PACs without disclosing where their money came from. And super PACs, the term, the term super PAC is used to describe what is technically known in, in federal election code as an independent expenditure only committee. And political culture is a set of shared values within American society. So Americans share a commitment to democratic government. 
So what are some challenges to democracy? Some challenge is increased technological complexity, limited participation in government, escalating campaign costs, and diverse political interests. What are some, some questions about democracy? Are the people knowledgeable enough about government? Is low voter turnout a threat to democracy? And do political parties meet the need of most American voters? Questions about the scope of government. How big a role does the Constitution say should be played by the federal government? Does a bigger, more involved, or active government limit the people's freedoms? And do we need a bigger, more involved government to protect our freedoms? And does the media adequately inform citizens of what is happening in government? And lastly, do the federal courts overstep their bounds and intrude on the powers of other branches of government? 